I'm doing bet, and he gonna come out doing one of his songs, and then we, you know, okay. then we just gonna go from there. Because, no. We need two mics, though. Can you find someone to go fix that, please? No. You, you got the DJ? Who's the DJ? Just be ready. I know what's Dice el espíritu que va a brillar como una estrella y tiene que brillar como una estrella. I was on drugs, heavy, heavy dog, and I started questioning shit like when my homegirl Carly died. She didn't ask for death, you know what I mean? Like it kind of like it was kind of like whack. Cause in my head, I was always like naive and ignorant to the fact that like people that do bad things only deserve to die type shit. But I was just at a very low point in my life, which my times are low or like really fucking low. And you can like either sit there and accept that that's the person that you are, that's the person that you don't want to be. So, you know what I mean, you take it, red pill, blue pill. Well, when I first met him, I could tell he was making the transition from who he was and who he wanted to be. Man, a lot of motherfuckers don't know he was out here. He was reckless. He was he was popping zans. He was getting into this and that. You know he, he you know he was in the streets for real. And, you know, and I see him battling with that. That's 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 all I seen. I see him battling with who he was, with who he wants to be. Some way, somehow, the universe brought us all together and showed him, hey, my nigga, he ain't supposed to be over here breaking their head, doing this and selling that. You supposed to be over here getting this shit together, you feel me? So we ain't gotta do that no more. I think that he's becoming who he wants to be. That's what I think, that's, that's what I think. I think Vice is guiding him in the right direction because Vice was him five years ago. Well, my name is Victor, um, known better as Vice. I'm a Tatangang and Kisi Malongo which is a high-ranking priest in the religion. I didn't come to the religion because I was in need of anything. I came to the religion because I was searching for a bigger purpose spiritually. Because I knew that I was always involved with it, but I wanted to take control of it myself and be actually able to do something with it. When we first met, I saw, I saw myself in him a lot. You know, because at his age, I was like that. I was lost, I didn't know where to go, I didn't have any direction. And it kind of touched a soft spot where I was like, I want to help this kid. You know, I want to I wanna guide him. I want to show him something that he's never seen before. I didn't draw myself to him. It's either his spirit drew me to him or my spirit drew him to me. So one or the other pulled. And that's where we made the connection. I was always curious and believing in something, bro. You know what I mean? Like, always curious. Uh, I just, with, you know, stereotypical, like, religion, I didn't see what other people saw, you know what I mean? And Vice was always on that. And every time that he would talk to me about some shit and it would be something spiritually or religiously, like I'd feel it and I'd just be like, damn, that's the first time somebody said something like spiritually and like religious to me. Then I'm like, damn, like, I mean, me, me and X would have like conversations about that shit like crazy. He's not, he wasn't into what I'm into, you know what I mean? But just like, he definitely had like an open mind towards it. We definitely had conversations about it. I'm just bringing it to light now because I just, I don't know, I just feel more comfortable with it. I want to talk about it, but I don't know if I can get too in depth about it, to be honest. People are going to look at me like if I'm fucking crazy in any form of way. My name is Mario Paz. I'm Tata Nganga in Kisi Malongo. This religion is Paloma Yombe. Es una religión muy bonita, es una religión que viene de la esclavitud, de los congos negros. Pasaban muchas situaciones, pasaban muchos trabajos, hasta que eh, fue iniciada y a partir de ahí eh, la vida de todos ellos fue cambiando poco a poco hasta llegar a la liberación. ¿Por qué nosotros eh, cogemos practicar privado? Porque 
es una, es una religión donde tiene muchos secretos y no podemos divulgarlo. Dile que yo hablo lo que el muerto me dice, que el muerto me habla. When we signed up religiously, we decided to take this step for the rest of our lives. You know, it's something that I'm cool with and everybody who's involved is cool with. Continuing to practice and continuing to work to better our lives for the rest of our lives. Wi-Fi llega a mi casa por medio de mi hijo. Llega con una situación bastante incómoda. Es un muchacho que viene con un astral muy bonito, pero lo tenían apagado. El muerto marcó unas limpiezas para empezar y después se desarrollaron otras cosas y a partir de ahí fue que vimos que realmente todo lo que decía el muerto estaba en el camino. He's had situations with friends, situations with, you know, the law, yeah. certain so things that it's hard to move forward as an artist when you're dealing with those things. So on my end and on Padrino's end, we made sure to come in and let him know, like, you're not alone, you got somebody who can help you do this. And throughout time and throughout different um, proof that we've been given, where we've gone to resolve a situation and it's played out how we said it was going to play out, he's started to believe in something bigger than just the physical. And that's where it took a turn where he was like, okay, I understand I have a guiding system now. And I understand that I have somewhere where I can always go when I have a problem and that people actually genuinely care about. Exitosamente la vida la ha cambiado de la noche a la mañana. De la noche a la mañana. I always felt like there is some sort of like being that is like higher than me and that I gotta like humble myself and give thanks to because I feel like there's a lot of inhumanly shit that like um, I can't describe, <laughs> like I can't fathom in the words, I can't tell you about shit, but you would have to be there just to see it, you feel me? It just shows me that just like, you know, in life there's just certain things that happen and you gotta just, you know, calm yourself down and prepare yourself for the good, the bad, and the ugly. And just, you know, that's really it, honestly. It really is, it's, it's, a, it's a coping mechanism of helping me with my everyday life. I see him a lot healthier in an aspect of mindset now because he knows what's going on and he knows that there's a way to always get through whatever situation or whatever rough road he's going through. So it makes it easier for him to make music. It makes it easier for him to create and it makes it easier for him to function as an artist. Every man is saved by their own belief, you know? You, don't, you want to keep friends, you don't discuss politics and religion. Hey, that boy got some shit in the chamber right now. His new album is just on some, not, not even on no street shit, just on some different attitude, like, what's up? You feel me? Like, I'm here now. That He, he turning up. His music turning up. Musically, he's transparent because he does open himself up and he's an open book to his fans. And he knows how to articulate his words very well. And his music always has a deeper meaning than what people understand. I just personally feel like I don't got shit else to do in this world other than be here. So it's like, well, I wake up every day and try to like not take advantage of that, you know what I mean? It's the only thing that I'm good at. And on top of it, like, I just, I just want to be the best at what I do. I try to like, portray myself as like this laid back like person that like is very like down to earth and all this other shit but like dog like I don't fucking win. I don't give a fuck about nothing else.